So Georgia can see that we're in the production unit where you have the different species of worms and you will be taking us around just showing us where you get started and why you have this specific unit the way it is. Why did you decide to use wood as your material? What are kind of the, the materials that you use for composting? Is it every other thing from the kitchen waste that you bring here? Yeah, so inform us more. Show us where we get started. So like we feed them once, once in a week, or we can just feed them once for the 30 to 60 days, give them time to feed on uh, the compost, then now we just come and harvest. So like we harvested the compost, this is why you see the bed is uh, uh, half empty. We just fed them just recently or yesterday. That is why even you can't see them at the top. But in a, another bed like this one, we fed them last week. So in this bed, we fed them last week. And uh, here you can see them, they are here at the top because they are already, already in the uh, fresh manure. That is, they are feeding in this. So what is just remaining here is for us to bring the green leaves and uh, more manure, we feed them, then we give them the time. That is the period of uh, about, mostly here we have been harvesting them after 45 days. We give them the 45 days, and then we will be back and uh, harvest. So within the 45 days, we'll just be managing, checking on the predators, moisture, and uh, that. So the reason when as to why- When you talk about predators, we need to know what are the predators. So mainly the predators, that affect this system, we have mainly the safari ants. That is the biggest challenge that we face. And that is how we are, that is why we use the ODG Noel on uh, these stands. Now this one will be able to eliminate the safari ants. They can't be able to, to cross over to the beds. So that is how we are able to deal with that. Uh, the other predators are not major because they are the birds, uh, at uh, maybe one bird can come harvest about five worms. That is okay because we have we have a lot of worms now in, in the bed. So the reason as to why we have uh, chosen to use wooden stands is just to uh, hold the manure because per bed we are able to hold about 400, uh, not 400, but uh, per bed. We are able to, have, to hold about 150 to 200 kgs of compost. So per stand, we are talking of about 600 kgs. So we see that uh, wood will be able to hold uh, well. And uh, then we use the rhino, the polythene rhino, to make sure that the worms will not go through to the wood. Because, for example, if we don't use the rhino, and the wood, because of the moisture in the manure, the woods will be wet and the worms will start also feeding on the wood. So that is why we use the rhino. In other structures, we can use the plastic drums, the half plastic drums. We do the same setup, but because now they are plastic, we, use, we won't use now the porridge. So we'll just put in the uh, manure, everything that we are going to compost, and then place our worms. Uh, so that is why we have chosen either wooden or plastic containers. Then now from there, we look at our outer structure. So uh, the worms like a cool environment. Uh, so we use, we have to give them a shade. And then on the sides, uh, we make sure that uh, we have covered in a way that the temperature won't go on the rise, won't be so high. So the worms will be okay to work on the compost within the, uh, the moderate the moderate temperatures. So that is why we choose uh, the iron sheets on top. And then on the sides, we can either have the shade net or the wood of cuts. So that is why we, we work on that structuring. What do you mix for you to get the best? Uh, so for, for us to get the best uh, compost or vermicompost, uh, it's not really good to work on uh, one type of uh, input. Uh, so mainly we work with the cow dung, that is one of the things that we use. The second thing, uh, we work with uh, dry matter, that is another thing. 
then the third thing we work on uh, green leaves and mainly when we are talking of green leaves there are a variety of them but um, uh, we try as much as possible to work with uh, Tithonia. Uh, we work with Tithonia, Russian Comfrey, Amaranth. So those are the three main varieties that we use. Also we go into looking at times one can use the kitchen uh, refuse. Vegetables, fruits and vegetables. But now when we go into that area, it gets to be a bit broad. And uh, we try to select because there are some things that we can press here which will harm the worms. So we try to eliminate the citrus fruits, the onions, the lemons, uh, the oranges. So those, those ones we don't mainly use in the compost. But for vegetables, uh, sukumawiki, spinach, those ones we can use. Uh, fruits, uh, banana leaves, avocado, uh, uh, leftovers, we use them in the compost because also they, they increase the nutrients. So those are some of, the, uh, some of the varieties that we can use in our compost. So George, how much production are you expecting to get? How many kgs of compost are you expecting to get from this unit? And how do you know that it's ready? Uh, so in uh, this unit, the unit that we are currently using, we have 12 uh, beds. And uh, in these 12 beds, we, we have a capacity of harvesting uh, from 800 to 1,200 kgs uh, during each and every harvest, which we take a period of uh, 45 to a maximum of 60 days. Then now, uh, we are able to know that our compost is ready once whatever we felt them has been uh, graded, uh, they are able to turn whatever we feed them. Mostly we feed them a compost that uh, it's not, it's in uh, big, big portions. Then after now the 45 to 60 days, now this is what we fed them a day ago. This is what we fed them seven days ago. But now what we have here, which have already been composted and have already been harvested, the texture is different. Uh, it, it turns to be very fine. And apart from being very fine, the color of the compost also changes. Because now this one looks almost like a bit green, but now this one looks a bit dark or brown. So this is how we are able to identify that the compost is ready. And uh, now from there, we are ready now to harvest. Now when it's ready to harvest, now we just start removing the compost and the worms from the system and we use our sieves, we separate now, now the compost. So now uh, after the compost have been uh, harvested, we can say that we harvest the compost twice. We get what we can say now is grade one and uh, either grade two. And uh, when we are selling our compost, mainly we have been selling it to organic farmers, uh, people who have been uh, doing seed propagation, uh, potted plants farmers. So those have been our main uh, customers. And then now we are able to sell our compost at uh, 70 shillings per kg. Uh, that is for small scale. Uh, when we go now beyond 1,000 kgs, we are able to sell it at uh, 50 shillings per kg. So every production, we give it an average of a ton from the first tons, which are 12 beds. So a one ton per, per harvest. So there are systems that we call, in our case, we are using the bed system. Uh, you find that you can work a system that we call a windrow system. That is where you prepare your ground. Either you can cement, you can put a rainer, then you can heap your compost to about two foot high, then introduce your worms. Uh, so it's also another easy system, but also we have to check into the issue of predators. Then from there, we have another system that we say, in our system currently, we just harvest the compost. But you find that you can work on a system that you can harvest uh, the compost and a liquid from the same that we call the vermi liquid. So, and that is what we, we have here. So the system is not yet ready, but uh, it's ranting on one side 
So when uh, we put everything there, then we feed. But now the difference with this is that it takes more time for you to harvest the compost. And uh, also it gets to be more wet than how we are feeding it here for it to produce uh, the liquid. So those are the different systems that we use when we are working to uh, the vermiculture and the vermicomposting units. So now we feed them uh, direct into the bed. Now like what Dennis is doing, uh, we just pour and then spread, spread it a bit. Just like that. Then now after spreading it after like that, we need just to cover, cover it a bit. And now that is where we come in with the, the sisal, the sisal bags. So that is how we do the covering. And uh, the reason as to why we cover is uh, just to reduce the issue of uh, birds being predators and also losing the moisture. If it gets to be too hot, we reduce the issue of uh, losing too much moisture. And also we try to encourage the other worms or the red worms to feed more. Because the more it gets to be dark in here, that, that is the more they are going to feed and compost our, our manure. So that is the main reason as to why we do the covering to reduce evaporation, uh, predators, those are the birds, and also to activate the worms to uh, feed more. So now this is uh, the final product. And uh, I have one of my customers here who mainly deals with uh, fruits, fruits farming at his half farm. He has uh, apples, gooseberries, tree tomatoes, and uh, he has been mainly using this as a, as a compost. He even has some, uh, some of his uh, products here. This is what he has been farming, the gooseberries, and other, mostly this is what he has been doing. And uh, today he is going to have uh, some compost uh, for his main seedlings. He is at the moment now where he is propagating. So he is going to have some compost and to go and plant two, uh, two kgs. So we are going just to package that. Then uh, he is going to be good to go. And now whatever remains, we can either opt. It depends on uh, how it looks. If it has so many eggs, we can return it into the system for the eggs to hatch, or we can uh, now directly use it as a farm if there are no a uh, lot of eggs. But now at the moment, we have a lot of eggs, so we are just going to bring it back or uh, bring it back into the system so that we can be able to hatch. So now that is how we are able now to do our second sieving. So now as we prepare to package his product, now these are some of uh, the people I've been working with. So here I have Pato and Dano. Uh, like Dano, he now is uh, on internship. He has been here now for two months and uh, he is almost leaving. He has been working, seeing uh, how we, we do it. And now I know once he gets out of here, he'll be able now to, to spread the gospel and also maybe do something similar to this. So uh, we are going to prepare now the sieving. We have already done our first sieving. Now this is what we have here. So uh, he is going to prepare now the second sieving here. Now this is mainly where we get now the very fine compost. They, they are going to do it for us. Uh, so now this is uh, the cow manure that we use and uh, looking at it first we are exposing it to we can say we are drying it a bit and uh, the reason as to why to na is we are trying to lose the excess ammonia or mainly the urine if we feed it direct to the worms direct from the cow shed we see it kills the worms because of the urine and that is why we are just keeping it here for a minimum of a week 
uh, after removing it from the cow shed. Then now from there, we go direct into feeding. So now this is how we go to feeding. We just uh, correct it, feed them direct into the beds, into our beds. Once the compost is ready, this is the final destination. And from what you can see from these green vegetables, is that indeed composting and organic farming is sustainable and it is possible. That brings us to the end of our episode today on Get It Right. And until next time, it's bye-bye from us.